Hello everybody out there in bass speaker designing land. My name is Bob. I am here at Sound Lab North Studios and I wanted to share with you a very simple technique that you can use for tuning the ports or the slot on your bass guitar speaker um, to make optimum use of the particular driver and cabinet size that you have. Um, without having to go into the feel small parameters and uh, the actual more scientifically engineered way to do this correctly, there is kind of a, um, a cheap and dirty way that you can do it. This comes in really handy if you replace the driver in a cabinet with a driver that doesn't have exactly the same parameters, but you already have the cabinet or it's one that you just love and you want to verify that the tuning is reasonably appropriate. I've got a technique that you can use that um, just lets you use the driver and cabinet that you already have and kind of verify that the space is as close as it can be. Uh, what I like to do is optimize it for the lowest note that I expect to be playing. Um, what I want to do is get my cone to not be flapping around too much so that when I put a lot of power into it at my lowest note, um, it won't be breaking up. And the reason I pick the lowest note to do that is because that's the hardest note. That's the one that's going, going to cause the greatest amount of cone movement. So that's where you'd like to uh, optimize the efficiency of your cabinet. So um, for a normal bass guitar, for me, that's 41 cycles uh, because I use a four string bass E, A, D, G with the E being the lowest note right around 41 cycles per second. Um, if you are a person who plays a five string bass with a low B, you're looking at more like 31 cycles for a lowest note, and that will be harder for most cabinets to do. Um, but a lot of cabinets will be uh, already designed to work really fairly efficiently at 41 cycles. So let me flip this camera around and show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. For this tuning or testing technique, what you'll want to do is hook up your speaker uh, in such a way that the it can be connected to the amplifier. So I've got the plug sticking down into this hole in my pool table and the wire comes out because you need to have the speaker cone facing upwards. And the reason you need to have that is because you need to have some items in the cone. Here I've got some grains of rice, but you can use popcorn or beans, whatever you happen to have. Um, although I would advise something probably not metallic, something that will not damage the cone as it bounces around in there. And then um, hook that speaker up to your amplifier, and then you'll need something that you can use to generate a frequency. The easiest way to do that might be to go to your app store and uh, search for frequency generator and find something free that you can download that will let you um, create an audio frequency and adjust it to your choosing. Um, as you can see, I've got an app here. This one I downloaded for free from Google Play. Um, I don't know that it's any better than any other app that's out there. But you'll want to use a sine wave, which is just a pure, simple tone, and um, that will let you see how your speaker is behaving with that fundamental tone. So um, run that frequency into the amplifier's input and let that sound come out. And what will happen as you begin to turn up the volume is you will see, you'll get to a certain point where you can see the um, those little items that you've placed in the cone will start to dance around a bit. Now, I don't know if you can hear that note that 41 cycle note that's being played here because it's pretty low for my phone to pick up. But the motion of those grains of rice will indicate to you that, um, that I've got it at a good space for testing. So um, for this demonstration, I'm using an inexpensive base cabinet from Seismic. Uh, this is a, like I say, it's a cheap cabinet that you can pick up on Amazon. And I thought before I take this out and really try to play with it, I want to try to find out whether or not the engineers at Seismic have included ports that are an appropriate size. 
And if they are, what will happen is at this most efficient frequency, which is what I'm hoping would be tuned for about 41 cycles, that rice would really not be dancing much at this power level. And that tells you that the cabinet and the speaker are working efficient, efficiently with each other to create that note without a lot of movement. Um, if it were less efficient, you would see there would be more cone movement and therefore the rice would really be dancing more. Rice, corn, whatever it is you put in there. So in order to test whether or not these ports are appropriate, I can just cover one of them up. And when I do so, you see that rice really begins to dance around a lot more. And what that tells me is those engineers at Seismic did a pretty good job picking a port size. Um, I can't really cover them both up while I'm holding this camera, but if I cover the other hole, it gets even worse. The rice really moves around a lot. So what that tells me is I don't need to do anything to change this speaker um, from its stock um, design. It's just fine. And you might think, well, wouldn't every speaker company do that? Um, but if you have an older cabinet, that technology might not have been around forever. Um, and it's also possible that you have a cabinet that you're using for a different purpose than what it was designed for. Or you may have replaced the driver in it, so whatever tuning the manufacturer did may no longer be appropriate. So um, I have this little Sonic Micro Mini 12 here. And I love Sonic cabinets. They are really well made, uh, made in Cudahy, Wisconsin. Um, this one is a few decades old, and I think it was intended to be a guitar speaker, but I'm using it with bass. And I replaced the original driver with a nice eminence. Um, when I did the same test on this speaker with the little rice grains on that cone, they were popping all over the place because this slot is much larger than what was appropriate for that speaker and cabinet com uh, combination. So what I did was just basically cover that slot with my hand and forearm until I got to the point where the rice was really calmed down. And um, then I cut a piece of wood to fit that, started out with a little bigger than it should be, and then cut it down until I was getting the same result with that piece of wood that the rice was remaining really fairly steady. I was getting a lot of sound out of it, but not a lot of cone movement at 41 cycles. And um, then I went ahead and fastened that piece of wood in there. Another thing I'd suggest if you're doing this is to round these edges a little bit because the sound doesn't behave quite as naturally when it hits a hard edge. You can get some kind of woofing, whistling sounds. So if you round that edge of whatever material, whether it's wood or whatever you're using, um, that may actually keep your speaker from making kind of a woofing or whistling sound. So that's um, what ended up being right for that particular driver in this particular Sonic Micro Mini cabinet. And here's another, uh, another example that's very similar. Uh, this is the Sonic Micro Mini 15. Um, and I have a pair of these that, I, again, I've had them for quite a long time. And um, I really like the way they're made. They've been very durable and they're lightweight. Um, you can't get a much smaller speaker cabinet that allows you to have a full 15-inch driver. At one point, these had ElectroVoice ProLine 15s in them, which were fairly heavy, but a very good quality speaker. And um, in order to make things a little easier on myself, I replaced those EV Pro lines with these um, neodymium magnet models. I think they're the Eminence Kappa. Anyway, um, whatever they are, I replaced these 15s to make the cabinets even lighter. And when I did that, I went through that same test. And as you can see, I came up with a similar result where most of this slot ended up needing to be covered in order to have this uh, speaker box tuned to be most efficient at 41 cycles. And having done that, I can pump a pretty significant amount of sound out of these cabinets and not have a terribly heavy thing to carry around. So um, taking advantage of cabinets that I already liked and drivers that I wanted to use 
This is a simple way to tune them and make them useful for your rig. So I hope you found some of that information useful. Um, if you have any improvements or better ideas or references to additional information that people can look at that might um, help them in their journey to tune their speaker cabinets, uh, please put it in the comments below. Any other questions or comments, of course, are welcome. And uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, right now it happens to be just a couple days before New Year's Eve. And so I want to wish you all a happy New Year. And I hope your 2023 brings you success, happiness, and great music.